Greetings and welcome to this After Effects session. Today we're gonna create some nice projection mapping extrusions on uh, architectural buildings and uh, we're gonna use only After Effects and Freeform Pro, a plugin from Metal, uh, which will allow us to have those nice uh, audio reactive extrusions uh, because we're also gonna connect that using trap code sound keys and uh, we're gonna have uh, all this uh, extrusion movement uh, going along some uh, audio track that you would uh, put in to generate uh, procedural movements like that based on the frequencies so um, uh, let me first uh, talk a little bit about this project uh, it, ha it has uh, audio and um, it's really nice uh, to see that live because it's really huge and uh, since it's uh, quite a simple uh, technique it's uh, actually uh, just a photo mapping there's no real 3d in there uh, I didn't use any 3d software so it's really simple workflow you just uh, need to know how to set your things up so um, let's uh, get right in After Effects so in a kind of project like this um, Projection mapping uh, to me is like the holy grail of uh, motion graphic jobs uh, because it really allows us to uh, sh to um, show off uh, what we can do in a super nice uh, type of uh, display. Uh, it's kind of more impressing to people uh, to watch that uh, than uh, to watch uh, something on a small screen, of course. And uh, people relate to this much more like something uh, like a firework uh, spectacle uh, even better than uh, if they would if they are just on a, the, the mode to uh, watch a TV uh, advertisement it's way way more fun to do this kind of project than uh, to work uh, I don't have anything against them but uh, people in real estate or uh, if you're creating a, a little ad for uh, a tourney uh, I don't know it's boring <laughs> what can I say so these projects are fun I try to uh, get uh, most of them uh, in my schedule, even if uh, uh, it doesn't pay as much as uh, what attorneys uh, or uh, people in real estate would pay. I think it's uh, it's a nice uh, field for explorations and uh, experimentations, and it's fulfilling. It's fun. It's it's uh, at the same time it's uh, like doing an homage. Uh, it's paying our tribute to uh, the architects who built these buildings way, way uh, back in 1860-something. Uh, I don't know. And uh, probably little doing a little bit of uh, artwork on uh, religious building. I don't have any religion. Uh, uh, I don't have any uh, favorite religion. Uh, I would be as happy to do this on Muslim, uh, Jude Judaic, Hebraic. Uh, Buddhist building, any any building, even like a natural uh, uh, rock, uh, anything is fun. Anything where it, you have like those lines, those little intricacies that you can uh, pull off a uh, nice motion uh, design magic over it, and it's always fun. So um, enough yapping about uh, projection mapping. Let's uh, let's see how to uh, how I did this. Uh, so first, I did uh, receive this. Uh, photo so uh, let's see how I set my I've set my things up so this is what I got from uh, the client like uh, what you have to do at first step is to go on location where you're gonna have the projection and uh, write about where uh, the uh, projectors are going to be so you have to determine where your projectors are gonna be hanging in this case they are uh, pointing straight at the church about uh, at about this level so there's going to be a little uh, angle in uh, in there uh, but that that's no worries for us and um, uh, let's see what I did here I just did a little bit of uh, color correction here just simple curves it to give it a little bit more of a night uh, aspect and then uh, I also uh, had this to, to come uh, that came with it it was a uh, something that the client already set up uh, the project the projection uh, guy gave me this so uh, probably something you're gonna receive if not you're gonna be the one who's creating it anyway uh, I so I just uh, 
uh, added some uh, corner pins on the photo here to make sure that everything is uh, uh, lined up as uh, best as I can. It's not totally like uh, exactly on it, but uh, as close as you can it, as as close as you can get it, uh, it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna look fine. So uh, this is how it was. I just corrected the angle a little bit so I can work with that and I don't need to have that active and uh, the other thing I have also is this that came with uh, it's just a uh, yeah this I have to set it to normal it's just a mask uh, that is going to uh, uh, cancel everything that is uh, happening outside so just for good measure I stuck that layer on top of the stack here and just set that to stencil alpha and we'll have our uh, nice uh, little church and we don't need to have uh, this on so oops this needs to be stencil luma sorry for that so there we have um, only our church with our little uh, color correction here and uh, it's right about in uh, I've uh, put that in a new comp and it's uh, this comp is like a standard 1080p uh, but it's uh, vertical it's like a rotated 90 degrees uh, full HD standing so um, this is what I have now let's um, see how uh, easy it is to create some displacement map for that so let's uh, get our church BG and uh, let's uh, make a new comp with that and um, we're gonna call this this place and uh, this we can set as a guide because we're not gonna use it really and the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll create a new solid and we'll make it gray so this is uh, really important we'll use this value 128 128 128 that will make it exactly in the, in the middle uh, value so everything that is at this value will be flat and as we get uh, more bright as we get towards uh, the white it's going to be extruded towards the exterior and uh, as we get towards the black it's going to intrude it's going to uh, go uh, the bricks are going to go inside so uh, let me illustrate that <coughs> so first we want to cover all our space with this so everything by default is uh, flat and uh, we can start uh, by drawing our shapes of what we want to extrude so let's first make a quick example I'm gonna pull off uh, I'm gonna outline this this little shape here on uh, this column here the, the this nice pattern here that's going down I'm gonna do it quite rapidly so uh, if you're doing this on a real project I suggest that you take a little bit more of your time to make it as precise as possible because it's really going to be nice uh, as you get these uh, brick patterns uh, that are sometimes uh, a little bit irregular so you want to make sure that you pick it up nice and clean following in the edges here so let's try to do that as quick as we can so I'm selecting that creating a mask on my solid and probably uh, I'm doing it on this solid but I'm gonna create another one and uh, you'll see why So there we go. We have our shape. Now we can refine it, making sure that it's not too bad. Doesn't look too uh, horrible. And once you've done that, now uh, let's just create another one and put that underneath. And this one, let's make it. Uh, white or let's make it red so we'll see it and uh, let's 
how we're gonna go along with that is we're gonna add a fill effect on this And uh, this we're gonna set to 128, 128, 128. All right. So let's make a simple animation. So let's add a keyframe on the color here at the frame zero, and I'm gonna tap U to reveal keyframes. And let's go like a 30 to frame 30, and let's create another one. So. Frame 10, it's gonna go all white, and at frame uh, 20, it's gonna go uh, all dark. And uh, if we want that to be uh, looping, we can simply Alt click on the stopwatch here and get right in property loop out type cycle. So that's uh, what we have now. So we have this simple shape uh, flashing and we're going to set it up with uh, the freeform now so you will understand what we're doing exactly. So let's get back in our church edit. This We're going to apply freeform to it. So let's bring in our displace. Right, so it's, uh, it's at the right spot but we don't want this to be active. And um, now we're gonna add a Freeform Pro to our church. Now, before we do anything, we're gonna do something. Uh, we're gonna, once again, duplicate that and uh, remove Freeform from this. This is going to be our guide, so we're gonna keep this uh, unextruded and this is our guide, this is our displace, and this is our actual layer which will be uh, on which we'll apply freeform. So first thing um, I'm gonna do is create a camera. Control Alt Shift C and uh, 35 millimeter in this case, or 50 millimeter, the default setting. And uh, nothing is uh, 3D. Uh, I don't need anything to be 3D because this is going to be 3D. Um, so now I have my camera, but uh, the thing that I want to make sure that is our camera uh, has to look at the, has to point uh, right uh, where the uh, point of view of the average person will be. So in real life, a person would be uh, approximately as tall as this. Like, uh, this is like a six feet person. These doors are really, really big. So, uh, some child would be like this height. So, let's see. Uh, let's take the. Um, let's make sure that our camera is pointing here. Now, now it's pointing here. If uh, I move this up to get it at the right place well we're losing part of uh, our church so what I I'm sure there's another way to do that but how I did this was just to uh, make it tall enough so I can move this around so uh, let's make it uh, let's uh, make it 3000 and 500 for instance and let's not move the church let's first just move our uh, uh, our church BG the the background and let's set it up our guide so uh, we point at the oops so we the middle of our comp is uh, approximately at the eye level of people uh, and this is our uh, Freeform Pro uh, a layer. So now let's move our camera and let's align those. Let's make sure they're aligned. So uh, I just move it approximately like that and then get move it whoops, upwards a little bit. And 
the right about there it's uh, it's the same so um, we're, we're also gonna get in the um, options here for uh, in our free form and um, first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to open displacement mapping and the uh, displacement layer we're gonna use our displace and uh, let's make sure that we're on this frame here where it's uh, white and let's see what we have here so nothing all right all right so now uh, let's increase the displacement height but everything gets all distorted and uh, everything else moves as well so let's set the displacement bias at zero so everything that is flat stays still so now we're just influencing this part but it's kind of uh, not exactly what we want as you can see here it's a a little bit uh, uh, we don't have any it seems that we don't have any geometry so how do we fix that is by going in tessellation here and uh, we have to check this option here adaptive and that will make it uh, more uh, like it all right so now let's we're on the white uh, frame so see now since our camera is pointing here we have uh, kind of the angle that we want as we get uh, higher and higher in on the church uh, our perspective is uh, going accordingly uh, as if we had this pointing here it will all be it would all extrude in relation as if like people w w would be flying uh, at this level and uh, people are usually on the ground level so um, now we want to add also some light and we don't need to have this uh, anymore so one nice uh, way to add some shadows there is to add a light so let's add one point light and let's make it white and, uh, and let's also make an ambient light so we uh, have light everywhere on our church and one other that will be pointing in a general direction and creating our shadows so here's our light I can move it down here and as you can see our shadows are uh, uh, moving uh, accordingly if we want to get uh, more shadow I think you can increase this up to a certain level I think that you can also move it on the Z if you want to uh, so what I did in my show I put it in the center and uh, right around this level and increase that so we get more uh, shadow but if we don't want this thing here then uh, I think we have to get in uh, the material properties and we can get rid of the specularity which will remove uh, this thing so now we have the extrusion we have our dynamic shadows everything looks great and if we we can easily change uh, the position of our light so I think it's good if the shadows are going upwards it gives a, a feeling of uh, of scale I don't know one thing that would be really nice uh, with freeform if uh, it had ambient occlusion then 
would be even more uh, cool to get these contact shadows here but we don't have that with uh, freeform unfortunately uh, so let's let me uh, now that we've set this up uh, let's let's do more crazy stuff so um, uh, I was planning to show you some helpful scripts so uh, now you understand the principle you can stop right here and uh, do your thing but if you want to get more uh, detail uh, and learn more you can stay with me and uh, let's see how we'll uh, um, make uh, nice patterns with these bricks so now I hear a lot of you are going to say really you're doing that manually if you can find a way to do it uh, automatically just email that to me but uh, I think the best way to do that and I'm gonna create a mask on all these little bricks there and I'm gonna skip one and I'm gonna explain why I do that later it's not that bad I mean it's not uh, the worst time that can be spent it's really valuable because uh, after you've done that correctly you're gonna have nice uh, real nice ways to create patterns and if you think this is a lot of work it's I think it's really uh, kind of insulting for the actual people that put those bricks there in real life I mean they didn't have an easy way to do it they, they, they couldn't like trace auto trace their bricks think about it it's so much work so much work so this is the time where you might uh, want to uh, hire an apprentice to uh, do this job for you because it's not a hard job it's just A little bit boring, a little bit not the best use of our skills, but I, I, when I do this, I think of it as a uh, therapeutic activity. I just take my time and uh, look at the nice intricacies that this church has. And uh, like some some uh, walls are going to be much more regular than than that, and uh, it's gonna be maybe easier for you to uh, automate this uh, selection. But one thing is also you want to get these shapes. You want them, oops, uh, you want them to uh, be a vector. So uh, you don't want them to become. Uh, pixelated on the edges because uh, it's not gonna make nice uh, nice extrusion for us so I'm locking them only because if I go uh, I don't want to select them by mistake when I go back to it and uh, if you want to like if you're not sure where it the line is you can brighten everything up in the viewport by doing that so I can see that my brick is there and uh, let's uh, say that this is another patch here that we're gonna extrude and now that we've done this uh, part there's 23 there's 23 bricks so let's uh, now that they are all locked let's uh, do our second pass and I'm gonna draw this here and I'm gonna change its color to not blue but green maybe and uh, there we go so I'm gonna fill up the holes there probably gonna forward this bit now that I've uh, been doing this for 
so long I think it's gonna be quite boring for you guys so see you in a few fast forwarded frames All right, so we know for sure that this patch here has 44 bricks. It's quite a nice number. All right, so um, now that we've got all that, this is uh, something that we can make a uh, composition, and then we're going to move all our attributes, and we're going to call that brick patch right one. And right in there, maybe we can, if we think we need that, we can bring in our church uh, uh, guide here so we can still see it, but it won't render. And uh, uh, why is it red? Because we need also to be bringing the fill effect, or we need to add the fill effect to that. And let's make it uh, 128, 128, 128. All right. Why is it white? Ah, because we brighten everything up. All right. So first thing we might want to do is uh, create, I like to do this to get a little bit more control. I'm going to create a slider control on here. Uh, and maybe I'm going to create a new null and call it settings that green to make it stand out so I'm gonna copy that onto here and uh, right away what I'm gonna do is a uh, mask expansion here I'm gonna I'm gonna call that gap and I'm gonna connect the max the mask expansion to uh, uh, the gap here so let's do that and now I'm going to select uh, this uh, and I'm going to copy expression only and I'm going to select all my masks. Oh, they are all locked. So I'm going to first make sure that uh, everything is unlocked. So now that I have unlocked all my masks and I still have uh, the expression in my clipboard, I'm going to select all that and uh, hit paste. So now all my masks are connected to the um, all my mask expansion are connected to the gap slider so I what I can do is I can um, do that if uh, I feel that I need a little bit more of a gap in between so I'm gonna set this to minus 0 0.7 so uh, here are our little bricks now and uh, to get nice uh, offsets animation here is a cool little trick. I have all my masks on the same layer now, and uh, half of them are orange, half of them are green. So I'm gonna go uh, in the scripts, and uh, this script is called a um, separate masks in layer. Just Google that, and uh, you'll find this on the website. And pull, I'll put the link in the description below. So uh, when I click on this it will ask give each layer new anchor point based on its mask I will say yes it even has uh, this panel here when uh, we can call it something so uh, let's click OK and uh, that's gonna create a solid from every mask that we have so that's cool one, one thing that we can do at first is check it out they are still green on here so let's pick up all of those are red now but let's make those green so it's a little bit easier for us and let's make those orange orange alright oops yeah so 24 first are orange and then the other one are green and now we have each of our bricks on its own layer that we can then offset with scripts so um, let me select from the bottom to the top select all of those uh, and oh 
at first we must create an animation on them so let's do that uh, we've got our fill here let's do that on our first brick so this is a brick down here and um, depending on what you want to do let's add a keyframe here and we're gonna have it extrude all the way up and then we're gonna make it stay up for a little while and then we're gonna make it go down and then we're gonna make it go back to its uh, initial value and uh, we can have it hang around like that for a little while and then it's gonna start over again because we're gonna set that to loop by uh, alt clicking on the, the keyframe and then we're gonna go here in properties loop out type cycle so this break is gonna go wee, 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 wee in time <coughs> And uh, we want to apply that to all. So, so let's uh, copy our expression here. Let's uh, select from the bottom one. Let's select all of that to the top, even the one that we just had. We can copy them over it. So now we have the same animation on all our bricks here. But what we're going to uh, do is now that we have selected from uh, the bottom to the top, we're gonna go get another little nice script and it's called sequence uh, layer so click on this uh, probably you'll have to wait a little bit in my case I just click here to uh, make it this panel appear and uh, I don't want to use seconds I want to use frames and I want to offset them uh, eight frames so once I click on execute it's gonna make a nice little stare like this but now uh, I need to go check where the last one's at here and bring this back so everything is uh, existing at the first frame so now I'm gonna hide uh, the layer guys so now we have something like this going And since we've uh, created our little pattern going uh, down to the top, it's going to go like that. And our second round uh, of greens is going to go. So what I usually do is I get my greens now and uh, I offset to it eight frames. So let's go four frames and then bring this here around here. So it's gonna go like and it's gonna do that infinitely so that's a a nice way to have it go uh, like that so let's see what it uh, so let's see what ha what we have here uh, oh let's set this back to a zero so we have that and uh, oops let's so this is how our uh, displacement map is uh, looking right now. If we ramp review it. And let's see how it looks in here. nice our bricks are going whoop, 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 in a nice little pattern they're getting out and they're going in and it's going upwards so that's pretty cool now last part of this let's see how we can connect that to uh, music so uh, let's get back in our displays here I'm going to bring in um, a audio track. I'll put a link on where you can get this audio track on SoundCloud. Uh, and I'm going to create a new solid. I'm going to call it Sound Keys. And on this one, I'm going to add Trap Code Sound Keys. There it is. So this nice plugin allows us to uh, assign a audio track 
and get the audio spectrum data out of it. So now that's what we have by default. I'm going to activate uh, the layer control. So um, let's uh, hear this out. So let's look at our waveform here. So we have like a nice little spikes around here. I'm going to try to grab that part here. Going up. And what what you see here on is this uh, green line is uh, uh, what I'm ac encapsulating. So let's play this back. And here we'll be able to see uh, what data we're getting out of this. So boom, 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 boom. Poem, 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 poem. All right, let's keep that and um, let's uh, go on frame zero and let's click on apply. You can have uh, other ranges as well, but let's do it with one and that will create keyframes here. Keyframes uh, that are going to be on a range of zero to 100. So we want to change that. Our range, depending on what we want to uh, get. In our case, uh, we need to set the minimum to 0.5, which is going to be uh, the middle point between white and black, which is middle gray. And the maximum is going to be 1, because 1 is white. So uh, let's apply that. And now that's working. So now in here, what we simply need to do is to alt click on the color or the fill here and just connect that to the sound keys output. It's going to type down thi these keyframe and then each uh, hit is going to go white. Boom, 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 boom. So it, it's kind of a one way to do it to make it respond. So now if we remove that, we don't see anything because we need to make sure that everything is gray here. So we got our nice shadows. Going with the beat and we have our nice extrusions here. And uh, let me show you how you can uh, mess around with uh, time remapping. So we've got this brick patch here. And uh, let's say like uh, up to frame zero to 200 so let's open up range 2 and uh, for range 2 let's grab those down here and for that we're gonna have a custom and we're going to have the minimum at 0 and the maximum at 200. All right. Let's click Apply. And now we have two outputs here. So this patch here, we're going to go right click time, time remapping. And let's remove the last keyframe here. And I've copied it here so I can remember it. So frame to times. Frames to time. All right. So we're going to go alt click here. And we're going to say frames to time. Um, this. And close. So it will like 
go to so when it's down here this is frame 0 this is frame 200 so as it goes up and down it will go like frame 47 56 well, 47 200 it's gonna go back and forth like this in time in your animation so if I play it back uh, it's gonna go with the beat so that's another way to have it uh, some nice extrusions and uh, remember that uh, if you think that everything is going out too far you can always uh, like uh, get this gray wider anyway and you can always go back into uh, your freeform here and uh, let's say we don't want them to get extruded that much and uh, you can always change the angle of your shadows if you want a light from the top if you want a light from the bottom if you want to have uh, oops, uh, lights uh, on the side here and the uh, one last thing why do we have this kind of weird sky now oh, it's because Why do we see this? Why do we have this weird thing there? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh yeah, I'm gonna mask it from here. So let me just turn off the sound keys here. make sure that this is at the same position as this so we have uh, and this we're gonna make a new comp with it move all attribute then I have this super tall uh, this and I'm gonna make sure that everything around that is black so I'm gonna just quickly put one solid here and another one on top And that's what I'm gonna use at this level here to stencil uh, Luma everything. So now we've got our output, but still everything is at the right angle. But still, we want. Let me show you how to output this. Uh, if you want, we want only to get what we need. So this is. Let's see what is our. Uh, what's the amount of pixel on top here and what's the amount of pixel on the bottom here so let's see right now we're 1118 let's uh, get to uh, align and if it was totally aligned on the top it would be 960 so I can go in my calculator and uh, because I'm really bad at math, so I'm gonna calculate 1,118 minus 960. So it's gonna give me 158. So when I output this, when I output my final output, which is going to look like this, um, one thing that uh, exists in After Effects that you can do is cropping here so I'm gonna crop 158 pixels from the top and uh, what's the what's the amount uh, down so 
what's the size of that? It's uh, 300 and 2,500 minus uh, 158. Minus 158 and minus uh, 1920. So that's the uh, value that we're going to put for the bottom. And once we do that, as you see here, the final, the final size is going to show up and it's going to say uh, 1080 by 920 because we're uh, standing vertically so that's one way that we're gonna be able to crop our thing and uh, not worry about uh, the extra space here so uh, choose your settings of uh, preference here and uh, that's uh, I've been talking about for so long I'm um, sorry for that so that's my uh, way for uh, setting up extrusions if you uh, have any uh, I'm gonna put the project file for this church if you want to uh, practice on it do anything uh, what I can do is next year when we do this show again uh, if you give me the permission I can uh, feature your work and uh, play it on the church if that's something that would uh, perhaps be fulfilling for you I won't be able to give you a big loot of money for that uh, which I would like to be able to do but uh, since you know how to pull off extrusions now, let's see what your imaginations can make you do. So thank you very much for watching, as always. See you next time.